for these and other messages and books by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email office at powercityinternational.org. Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17 says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises, offered up one only begotten soul. The point at which he made the offer was when he received the promises. When you receive the promises of God, one of the proof that you receive those promises is that you respond to God with an offer. He received the promises and by faith in the promises he offered. When you receive God's promises by faith, you offer. He offered to God his only begotten son. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Verse 19. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. He counted God able. So it was not an issue for him to offer. People find it difficult to give to God because they have not counted God able. By faith, he received the promise and he offered. And this is the basis on which he offered. He counted that God was able. Able to raise him up. Even from the dead. God was able to raise him up even from the dead. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die, it abides alone. God was able to raise that offering. From the dead. He made the offer when, when he came to that conclusion. And from whence also he received him in a figure. In the image. The image that was in Abraham's mind was the image of resurrection. I call it the inner image of the covenant that you must have. Our change is inside out, not outside in. Once the figure on the inside changes, the circumstances on the outside is a matter of time. They will conform. The inner image, the image of covenant in Abraham was that God was going to raise him from the dead. He had that image. He had that picture on his inside. Hebrews eleven nineteen amplified. For he reasoned that God was able to raise him up even from among the dead. Indeed, in the sense that Isaac was figuratively dead, potentially sacrificed. He did actually receive him back from the dead. He did actually, in, in Abraham's mind, the reality of Isaac's resurrection was already registered. In fact, in the mind of Abraham, he had, already con he had already killed Isaac. Isaac was dead. He had already offered Isaac. He had considered Isaac dead. It was, he was a dead boy. And he had not only seen him dead, he had also seen him in the reality of his imagination raised from the dead. He had an inner image of the covenant that cannot be altered by any devil. That kind of image will bring the world under your feet. That kind of image will create anything that you can ever desire to create. That kind of image cannot be stopped by the devil. The image was too real for any wizard in hell to interfere. He received him. He received him actually from the dead. He saw the death of Isaac and he saw his resurrection. It was real. Genesis 11.3 and they said one to another, go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. Verse 4. And for they said, go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. 
and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. It was real, just like the resurrection of Isaac was real in Abraham. These men also had the reality of the image of a city and a tower in its completed form. They already saw the picture of this city and the picture of this tower in its completed form. Once you see the picture completed, you enter rest. You enter rest. You don't, you're not bothered anymore because once you have seen the reality of it, why are you bothered? I mean, nothing bothers you anymore because it's as real as real. The problem is that most of us have not painted completed pictures. We still have our pictures in bits and pieces and there are rooms and loopholes for Satan to interfere with the image and distort it. And once the image is distorted, it's easy for you to doubt. Once the image is distorted, it's easy for you to get into unbelief. Once the image is distorted, it's easy for you to be gripped by fear. And when these toxic emotions are in operation, faith is contaminated. Because fear tolerated is faith contaminated. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower with the children of men build, build it. Put up the amplified version of Genesis 11, 5 form. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. They had built it. As far as God is concerned, they had built the city and they had built the reality just like Abraham saw the actual resurrection of Isaac and in his, in his imagination, he saw Isaac die. Isaac died inside Abraham and Isaac came back to life inside Abraham. It was real. Nothing could stop it. The Lord came down to see the reality of this image. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. It was real. Some of us have not seen ourselves prosper. We talk prosperity. We shout prosperity. We sing prosperity. We like prosperity. But there's no image of prosperity on our inside that against all odds, nothing can stop from coming to pass. That's where the problem is. The mission of preaching is to build that image. The mission of teaching is to build that image. All a preacher is doing is painting pictures. Every preacher, it doesn't matter what he's preaching. The mission of preaching is to paint pictures and give you images that heaven or Satan can create. Because not every image that God creates. There are images that Satan has to create. That's the job of preaching. Because as the preacher is saying, it will be well with you. God doesn't want you to be poor. God wants you to be rich. God wants you to prosper. What he's doing is he's using a spiritual brush. To paint pictures in your mind. But there are people that have contradicting pictures that are more engraved in their minds than the picture of the preacher. So the preacher is working hard to put the picture. But their own traditional religious village belief is so engraved inside them that no matter what the preacher is saying, what they have seen inside is stronger than what the preacher is saying. So that's why year in, year out, your poverty refuses to go. Your poverty, because the Bible says, so shall your poverty, your poverty. Yeah. You refuse to let it go. In your very, before somebody comes to this church, Younger than you in faith and is already prospering. And you wonder why. The sickness refused to leave your body because in, the, in your inner man, the picture you see is of you sick. And you can't ever see yourself well. And a new person comes to the service who is flexible and ready to allow new pictures to be painted. And we paint the picture of healing, picture of health, picture of what Jesus did on the cross. And the picture of the finished work of Christ gets engraved in their minds stronger than the sickness and they walk out healed. And you've been here for a long time struggling with the condition 
And you can't explain why there are no changes. You can't explain why your circumstances are not listening. The inner image. The Lord wouldn't have come down if the building was not standing. <laughs> if the building was not standing, if the tower was not standing, and the city was not standing, nothing will have brought God down. He will have just been looking at it because he knows nothing will, come, will happen. But when God saw the conclusion, the building is standing and the city is standing because God doesn't look at the physical, God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outward, God looks at the... For God to conclude the matter, once he sees it in the heart, it's done. So the question is, what pictures have you painted for the rest of your life? What pictures are you carrying? There are people that are carrying pictures of defeat, pictures of struggle, and pictures of anticipating nothing but the same circle that they've been going around year in, year out. And God is telling you tonight, hey, friend, you paint the pictures and heaven will empower its manifestation. You paint the pictures. You paint the pictures. You fix the image. Don't let it get distorted. And in a short while, I'm going to show you the forces that distort the image of the covenant. You paint the pictures and nothing will interfere with its manifestation. Blessing you tonight. Amplified. And the Lord said, behold, they are one people and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And now, nothing they have imagined they can do will be impossible for them. You come to a realm of no impossibilities when you can have the image, the image, the glorious image of God's purpose for your life. The image of a glorious future. The image of an anointed tomorrow. No devil can alter that image once that image has been successfully painted. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah, you... you, you. You get in the word of God and build that image. That's why this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate there in day and night that thou mayest observe. The, the job of the book is to paint pictures. Pictures that the enemy cannot stop from coming to pass. Somebody shout hallelujah. God says that nothing shall be denied them. Nothing shall be restrained them. Nothing shall be restricted from them. Nothing is capable of stopping these people from what they have imagined to do. That thing they have imagined, nothing can stop it. What you imagine, nothing can stop. And if you imagine nothing, you have nothing. Because God will do what you imagine. And of course, Satan will do what you imagine also. <laughs> amen? Uh, I said amen. Somebody say image. Yeah, because image is everything. Bible calls Jesus the express image of God. He's the express image. That's how important image is. That the whole of Jesus is called the image of God. Jesus is the express image of God. So if you want to have godly pictures, they come out of Jesus because Jesus is the express image of God. So if you want to build images that God will confirm, it has to come from Jesus because Jesus is the source of all things. He who gave us his son, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? So if you are painting pictures, those pictures must come from the express image of God, Jesus. And Jesus is the world. You use the word to paint those images. Somebody shout hallelujah. Galatians 4.19 My little children of whom I travel in birth again until Christ be formed in you. The formation of Christ in you is the inner image of the covenant that God cannot but bring to pass. Is a formation. The formation of Christ. The painting of pictures that put together Christ. Until Christ be formed. Be formed. Until the image of Christ be formed. Paul said, I travel for you. I pray for you. My prayer for you is the formation of Christ. Give me the amplified version of that. My little children for whom I am again suffering but pangs until Christ is completely and permanently formed, molded within you. The molding of Christ. The molding of Christ via the painting of pictures from scripture. The molding of Christ until Christ be formed. Now, there is a formation here 
Ephesians 4, 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The formation Paul was praying for was in the mind, the formation of Christ in the mind. It wasn't the formation of Christ in the spirit. It was the formation of Christ in the mind. Because now Paul is praying that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Look at verse 24. And that you put on the new man which after God is created. The new man is already created. But the formation is in the mind. That's where the formation takes place. That's where paint pictures are painted. The painting of pictures is in the mind. Hallelujah. That Christ be formed in you. The formation of Christ in your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That Christ be formed in your mind. That you have mental pictures. Mental images of Christ. Which Christ? Christ in his finished work. The works he did for you. The works he finished on your behalf. The pictures of him rejected that you may be accepted. The pictures of him going to hell that you may go to heaven. That you may have those pictures formed in your mind. So that your mind is stayed on him. Your mind is stayed. He says, Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed. Your mind is set. Your mind is stayed. You are not a victim of a fluctuating soul. Because there are people who have fluctuating souls. Today they see Jesus in his finished work. Tomorrow they see how big their problems are. Your soul is fluctuating. You are a double minded man. Your mind is stayed on Christ. Hey. Your mind is stayed on his finished work. Now, that stain of your mind is the formation of Christ. Why? Because as we behold his glory, as we keep beholding, and we put our eyes on his glory as in a mirror, if we stay there, we are changed. We are changed into that same image from glory to glory. When you are changed into the image of Christ, the manifestation will be the finished work of Christ in his full glory in your life. You have no sh shortages. You have no satanic assaults that will deny you your inheritance. Because you are living in the finished work of Christ. In that realm, faith works naturally. Faith works naturally. Somebody say, I hear you. The formation of Christ. The formation of Christ. That Christ be formed in you. You put on the new man. Take the new man from inside and put him on in your mind. Be renewed. Take the kebota kaba. Take the finished work of Christ. The creation of the new man in righteousness and holiness. We are him. Let him, let him be won by you that the only thing you see is the finished work. The book of Hebrews 8, 6 says, but we see Jesus. That's what we see. We see Jesus. We see Jesus. We see Jesus. The book of Hebrews says, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. That's where you look. You don't look at yourself. Yourself is full of failures and mistakes and shortcomings. You don't look at yourself. You look at Jesus. The devil wants you to zero in on yourself. Because when you see yourself, you have distorted images. Yourself is full of errors. Yourself is full of mistakes yourself there is no good thing in you paul said it in my flesh there is no good thing the only thing that is in your flesh is lost lost failures inabilities weaknesses defeat you know depression feeling of inadequacy feeling of past mistakes and in your flesh shame of the past so you don't look at you because when you look at you, you see nothing but shame and disgrace. So take your eyes from you, looking unto Jesus. When you focus on Jesus in his finished work, you see victory, you see righteousness, you see holiness, you see success. Stay there. 
You yourself may not be perfect. You yourself may not be getting everything right. But even as you are failing, put your eyes there. Because as you are failing and looking, you will have strength to stand and continue. And you keep at it until you are standing straight. Until you are not failing again. You keep looking because you are changed into that same image. You stay there. You stay there. You don't look at you. And don't let anybody talk to you about you. Especially when they talk to you about the you that is not resting in the finished work of Christ. Don't let them project you. They should project Christ. And anybody that is not projecting Christ for you, avoid him. Anybody that is projecting your inability, your weakness, your failure, stay away. Stay where people will remind you of your true identity in Christ. If any man be in Christ, in Christ, in him you are complete. In him you live. In him you move. In him you have your being. You stay there and keep your focus right. Keep your gaze right because that's where the problem is. Your gaze will determine the pictures that are painted in there. Am I teaching somebody? Are you getting blessed? If you're getting blessed, shout bless. You stay, you stay. You stay, you stay with your gaze right. You look on him. He don't look at you. Paul said in me, dwelleth no good thing. He said the only thing in me is sin that dwells in my flesh. Sin dwells in my flesh. Your flesh is not redeemed. So there's sin in your flesh. He said, but after the inward man, I delight after the law of God. My real man is God. My real man is drawn to God. But in this body, if I zero in on this body, I will keep sinning. Because in this body dwelleth no good thing. So when you take your eyes from this body and you set your eyes on Christ, you win. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. If your amen is louder, you win throughout this year. If your amen is loudest, you win throughout this year. Lift your right hand and shout, I win. And I rejoice because I win. I didn't hear your amen. Woo! On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking, sir. You don't let nobody set your eyes on anybody. Nobody is your standard and nobody is your goal. You don't look at anybody. You look at Christ. That's your goal. That's your standard. We see Jesus. And when we see him, we shall be like him. So if we want to be like him, we have to see him. And when we see him, what we shall see is as he is, so are we. Yeah. When you see him, you see you in him. And when you see him, you begin to copy what you see. You begin to imitate. He said, be imitators of God as their children. So when you see him, you start imitating what you see. And as you're imitating what you see, where there was mistake, no more mistake. Because when you start imitating, after a while, you become a perfect imitator. God doesn't want you to try to be. He wants you to imitate. And it's very easy to imitate. Just copy. Copy what you see. If you try to set your own, you will miss it. But if you just copy what you see, it's very easy. If the man lifts leg, you lift. If the man put it down, you put it. If the man lift this one, you lift. Put it down, you put it. My yoke is easy. Imitating Jesus is very easy. If he says, hey, you go, hey. If he says, ho, you say, ho. That's perfection. What's perfection? Reflecting the image of Christ. It's easy. The reason why it's hard for you is because you are the one trying to set up your own standard. You are noisily hawking your wares. Across the street, you have opened your own shop. Noisily hawking your own wares. You know what I'm talking about? Proclaiming your own goodness. Celebrating how much you have not told a lie since you got born again. But you're full of anger and bitterness. You're hawking your own wares noisily. Making noise all over the place about your own righteousness which is filthy before God. Rejecting the finished work of Christ. Exalting your own works. And therefore you've got to save yourself by yourself. 
Because if that is your standard, then Christ is of no benefit to you. You have fallen from grace. And when you fall from grace, you fall into grass. Hey, am I teaching here? You stay with Christ. You stay with Christ and you stay set on Christ. You put your gaze on him and you build images, pictures of the finished work of redemption. Pictures of what Christ did on your behalf. You paint those pictures. Colossians 3.10 And have put on the new man. You have put him on. You have put him on. That's the image. We are talking about the inner image of the covenant. You have put on the new man. This is the man that has the inner image. This man has put him on. He has succeeded in removing the old man and removing the defeated man and removing the, sh the shameful man and he has put on the new man the man inside has occupied the man outside the man is clothed clothed by the inner man and I've put on the new man which is renewed the renewing of the new man is in knowledge after the image of him that created him. The new man is renewed in knowledge. The knowledge of him that created him. The renewing of the man is an ever going process. You don't renew the mind one day and it's over. No. Every day I wake up, I renew my mind. Every day. That's why we read our Bible every day. Why are we reading? To repaint the image. To retrace the exact image in case there was an overlap of the former. So I take my brush, which is my Bible. As I see myself, I retrace the image and make it obvious for that day. I don't know who gave believers the right to think that they can, that midweek service is optional. I don't know. Sunday, this place will be full. First service, second service. And they are coming with problems. Depressed. Sad. Disappointed. Feeling like God doesn't like them. Because last Sunday is too far. To still maintain the accuracy of the image they took from service. Enough, and enough image to win. So somewhere in the course of the week. The image became blurred. And then things that they had overcome start weighing them down. They start struggling. Then next Sunday, they come. Then we have to give them the image again so they can retrace it. Then they go two weeks. By the time they come after two weeks, they have become unbelievers. This is a daily business. Ever in the process. That's why we should have church every day for the year. 365 days. And all of you must be here. I'm still looking for that year where I will cancel everything and just stay here for one year. Every day is church. Every day, Balata, you cancel all evening engagements. You are on an appointment with God 365 days. You dedicate that year to God as a tithe of your lifetime. And see what comes out of you. Hey, oh sure and you know that there will be more than enough to hear uh, there will be it will never finish every day there will be fresh manna fresh give us this day there will be daily bread for your life I prophesy today the devil will never cheat you watch Dr. Abel Damino live on KLN TV via free to air decoders Log on to our website www.powercityinternational.org to watch our live services. Follow Dr. Abel Damon on Twitter and like our Facebook page by clicking on the Facebook and Twitter handle. You can also get more information on how to become a partner of Abel Damino Ministries International. I don't know. I don't know who give you people the idea to think that midweek service is optional. I can come on Sunday, but I don't have to go midweek. I, my own Christianity, I didn't learn it like that. You have not so learned Christ. You have not so learned Christ. You have no option. You do not dismiss the assembling of yourselves together. Why? Because the new man is ever in the process 
of being renewed ever ever in the process is ever in the process ever it's not a one day process is ever in the process because so much is happening in the world if you stay away from the word of God for more than a number of hours you could forget what you have heard Say, do not dismiss the assemblies of yourselves together as a manner of some eat. Much more when you see his day approaching. Because when his day is approaching, perilous times, rough times, very bad times, news that will not make you happy. Devil is on the loose because he knows his time is short. So we've got to come together for refueling steadily on daily basis. Why is it that the apostolic church was so powerful? Every day they were in the temple. They were in the temple daily. They never went on vacation. Every day there was a service. Every day. And apart from the service, they went from house to house. So fellowship was an ongoing thing in the apostolic church. And what happened? Explosion. Nobody lacked in that church. Prosperity. Who told us by running around you get money? Sit with God and see how money will look for you. It's not running around that brings money. It's in vain to wake up early and to bring the bread of sorrow. Who told you? The best times I get money in my life is when I'm studying my Bible and my wife knows. Every time I take out time to sit with the word of God, in the course of my study, it has never failed. Money must look for me. Money must, from strange, she knows. Every time I just take my Bible and I sit down to study, somewhere halfway, is either a phone call or a bank alert, or somebody will come to the house. It has never failed. Never. It has never failed. People I know, people I don't know. Because uh, Jesus, a balloon, a balloon, a balloon, a gebo daga, a gebo shatana, a balado babobo belina. They were fishing all day, all night, and they caught nothing. When Jesus arrived, what did he recommend? Bible study. They were fishing all night and caught nothing. When the master arrived, what was his recommendation? Bible study. He said, oh, yeah, yeah. can we use your boat for Bible study? I thought he would be talking about connections and new strategies for fishing. No, 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 no. Because the word became flesh. You see, whatever you're looking for, the word is the source. I feel like I'm talking here. You sit with the word, my friend, and the word will gather. The word will gather them. The word will gather them. Am I talking to somebody? The word will gather them. The, and when the word gathers them, nobody can resist the word. No, no, no. No president, no governor, nobody can resist. The word can command anybody because all of them are subject to the authority of the word. For by the word was the world created. The recommendation of the master for their struggle was the word. He said, can we use your boat to teach? They say, yes. He said, pull it out of the water. Pull it out. They pulled it out. Then he used their boat to teach. In the course of teaching, it came out by revelation, launching to the deep. It was part of the message. It's just that the Holy Ghost highlighted it for Peter to hear. It was part of the body of the message. Like I'm teaching now, there are some things that the Holy Ghost has stoned you with in the course of this service. It has come on you. Tum, tum, tum. Because... Kimano, Kebado, Kibala. No English again. And launch into the deep for a drought. And Peter said, uh, Master, this message, there's something you said. That thing says I should launch, but we've been in this water all night and we caught nothing. But now that you have spoken this word, at your word, we let down the net. The same water that was empty. Don't tell me that water was not empty. These are fishermen. These are fishermen. They, a fisherman cannot come water all night. Not even prewinkle. They say nothing. They didn't say we have caught only but prewinkles. They, they say we have caught nothing is nothing. In your village, what is nothing? <laughs> even frog, they didn't catch. They have caught nothing. But nevertheless, at your word, we will let down the net. Uh, and when that net hits the water, all the fishes that had left that river, somehow, somehow, they found their way in the river. Not just in the river at large. They gathered around where the net came. They all gathered to hear the word. 
all the fishes came they, the world assembled them the world gathered them when the net entered the world has finished preparing them bible said the fishes broke the net the net it was a net breaking catch 2015 your nets will break I give up, shut up money like never before you will not only open new bank accounts because of too much you open more than enough bank account Bible said they had to beg their partners. Hey, partners, come, come, come. And Jesus, the same yesterday, is the same today, is the same forever. The same way it happened to them, if you will only believe. Hey, shut up. If you will only believe and sit down at the feet of the master. Matter, matter. You are bothered about too many things. One thing is needful. And your sister has chosen the better part that shall not be taken away from her. What is the better part? To sit down at the feet of the master and hear the word. Say, I hear you. Shout it again. I hear you. Ever in the process of being renewed. And remolded into fuller. What are you talking about? What we don't know, we won't teach you. What we know, we teach you. Right. And if we know nothing, we won't be here. Right. We are here because we know something. Yes, and if we know something, you must listen. How can, we do? How can you hear without a preacher? That's why the preacher is here. Yes, because he has been sent. And he's not a stingy preacher. He's delivering the goods justifiable. <laughs> God punish the devil. This new man is ever in the process. Ever in. It's not a one time thing. That's why even for health, you have to keep looking at the world. For every area, for finances, you stay. There's so much to look at every day to have all round victory. There's so much. Even marriage, you have to look at the scriptures. You have to look at the scriptures. When there is a marital condition, you ask yourself, what does the scripture say? Because if you don't keep your mind renewed with the scripture, you can be callous. Yes, you can be callous. You can treat your wife like a beast. And your wife can treat you like an animal. Because her heart is, is getting hardened because she's not renewing it with the word of God. She's losing sensitivity. She's becoming callous. Same thing with giving. If you are not renewing your mind with the word of God, very soon you become a stingy devil. Stingy devil because only the devil is stingy. Very soon you that used to like giving, you that used to be liberal, don't think because you like giving it will always be like that. If you stay from the word of God, the stingy spirit will catch up with you. What are you talking about? You think Satan likes you giving? Satan doesn't like, he's a thief. How can a thief like giving? Before you know it, you become stingy. Giving becomes a major issue. You before that used to give freely. You will be calculating. All this one we have been giving. Say, what have we been giving it for? Uh, anyway, let me just reduce it. Instead of 500, let me give 100. At least I gave something. You stop the renewing of your mind. How do you know a man that is in constant renewal of his mind? His manifestation of his love for God gets stronger and stronger. His passion for the things of God gets stronger. His joy for the things of God gets stronger. He gets excited about the things of God. You will see him bubbling all the time. Because the mind that will have caged him is in constant conformity with the mind of Christ. Say I hear you. I'm not hearing say I hear you. Same thing with tithing. You say, believer that used to tithe before, all of a sudden he's eating his tight. And he's not feeling bad. Because his mind has assumed its former state. Yes? Why should there be, why should it be in the process of constant renewal? Because if you stop renewing it, it will fall back to be conformed to this world. Yes? It will go back to the false setting. See somebody that you thought, how many of you have, have, have ever been in a situation where a brother did something and you were surprised? How many of you have been there before? A brother you thought was on fire for God. 
just did something and Satan was better. Say, ah, Satan will not do this. Even Satan is better. <laughs> Say, ah, this brother, God. Mm, now, wow. Only God knows those that will go to heaven. <laughs> He, he just did something that shocked you. Why did he do what shocked you? Because he has entered a state of callousness. He, he left the place of renewing of his mind in that area. And his former mindset caught up with him. And he manifested like Satan's elder brother. And you're like, what? Bro? Bro? Uh, the, he's still a bro. The Holy Ghost is still inside him. It's just one of the things he used to be. That cut up because he stayed away from the place of the renewing of his mind. You haven't you eaten your tithe before and you are surprised? Huh? So I ate my tithe. Oh Jesus. I will pay next month. Next month you pay half. Next month you eat it. In one year you pay tithe only three times. Just like that, like that. You before that, before you even touch the money, you pray. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. Before I touch this money now, what's the tithe? Okay, tithe one side. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Then you look, which ones are the new notes? You remove all the new notes. You were almost doing like worship to put tithe aside. Now, when the money comes, you just carry on. Uh, come, uh, where is that budget? What did you say we need to buy? You're not even remembering it. Because your mind has gone back to its former state. Every unbeliever is selfish. So when you stay away from renewing your mind, you become a selfish person. The love of God must be fed by the word of God for it to always keep you in the place where you operate the life of Christ. If you stay away, you become callous. Am I talking to somebody? So it becomes frightening to stay away. That's why I say, do not dismiss the assembling of yourselves together. As the manner of some of you is. Even in the Bible, they know that there are some people that is their manner. I didn't say you, I say some people. Am I blessing you? Mark chapter 4, verse 14. The sower sows the word. The sower. What am I doing? I'm sowing. I'm sowing. I'm sowing the word. But And these are they by the wayside. Where the word is sown. So I succeeded in sowing it. You see, even the one on the wayside, the sower is faithful. The sower is sowing. Whether you are by the way or wherever, once the sower comes to the pulpit, he sows. The word is sown. That means I succeeded in sowing it. As far as I'm concerned, I gave you the seed. And it entered because sown means it entered. It's sown. I broke inside and put the seed. It's sown. Okay? But when they have a heart, they heard me. It's not like they didn't hear me. They even repeated what I said better than me. They heard. When they had heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Satan takes the word. What does that mean? He di distorts the image. You know, it's like you painted something and the painting had a head, hands, leg, and then Satan removed the head. It's not my perfect picture. I only see neck with hands. The head is gone. The picture is no more perfect. Satan took one portion. So now, you are running away from the service with half image. And with that, you can't have manifestation. Because what God comes down to see is a complete city and tower. The enemy coming. Now, if you read this, you would think Satan just has the right to come and collect anything all the time. No. If you read the Matthew account, Matthew said, these are they that have no understanding. They had it, but didn't understand it. And because they didn't understand it, Satan can take it because you don't understand it. The only people that Satan cannot take from are those that have understanding. That's why it says they are alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. They have no understanding. With all you're getting, get understanding. Are we together here? So Satan takes it. That's the first class of people. That's the first, that's the first attack of Satan on the image. He comes once in a while to take so that the image is under attack. Oh, he will attack. 16. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Who when they have heard the word, they heard it. Immediately they even received it with gladness. 
They were excited in the service. Oh, as if the service should not finish. But the devil won't let you go like that because he has to attack the image. That's why that image is critical in your journey as a believer. And have no root in themselves. So endure but for a time. Afterward, afterward, the thing entered, but they didn't have root. They had not meditated on it enough for it to have roots. So what happened? When affliction or persecution arises, why will persecution and why will affliction come? For the world's sake. When you start hearing this kind of word, you get ready for affliction. And you get ready for persecution. Because the devil will let you go with this kind of word free of charge. He will see if he can distort the image. He knows what this word is capable of doing if you and this word are left alone. He knows. He knows. Are you not surprised that the first thing Satan told Adam, first encounter between Satan and man, what did God say? What? What did God say? Did God say? He was looking for what God said. He didn't say, hi, how are you? Morning, bless you. No, or curse you. What did God say? That was all he was looking for. Because what kept Adam in the garden was what God said, the word of the Lord. That's what kept him there. And the devil wanted to take the root of it. And, and he went through Eve. And Eve didn't know what God said. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And because of that, she plunged the entire human race. Her and Adam plunged the entire human race into darkness and toil and pain. I think Satan will let you carry the word and be free. And that's why knowing that the devil will come to check that word, you have to know it well and fortify yourself with it. Yeah, you fortify yourself with it. Don't just take the word of God casually and say, I'm feeling good today. The church was very nice. What did they preach? Ah, Papa was just preaching very fantastic. What did he say? He said everything. No, you didn't. My friend, you heard nothing. You just, just when you are hearing me, be like a warrior in a battlefield. Be like a warrior. Looking out for which word in the service is directed to your situation. When you grab it, write it down. Take note of it. Make sure you stay on it. Stay on it because when persecution comes, that's your winning card. Yeah. When persecution comes, you say, Satan, the master said, go over to the other side. Win. Give chance. Storm. Get away. Ship. Move on. We are going to the other side. That's what the master said. But some of you, when it's time to bring what the master said, you start looking for your notes. Where is that notebook? What was that? Papa, Papa was saying something today. I wrote, I, Satan, wait first. I'm coming. Wait first. You think he's going to wait for you? Jesus didn't tell Satan, wait first. Satan said, if you be the son of man, turn the stones to be made bread. It is written. Because Satan, knew, Jesus knew that what Satan was coming for was for the world. When persecution Every persecution, every affliction, every trial, the target is to put you under pressure so you can release the word to go. So the devil can get you for breakfast. Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. How did the faith come? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. The, uh, the warfare is in the mind. He's working hard. To grab it from your hand. Persecution for the world's sake. You're a young lady. When you used to go to parties and follow men around. Your mother and father didn't say anything. When you started coming to Camp David. Your mother said you're not coming late. If you're not in this house by 6 o'clock. Don't come back again. Why is she suddenly putting up a restriction on you? If it was a man that parked a car in front of your house. Your mom would tell you. Anytime you finish I'll be awake waiting for you. But now, you're coming to hear a word that will change your life. Your mother suddenly says, no, 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 you're going out too much. Eh? The devil is at work. Eh, Gemma, am I talking to somebody? When you were not born again, money was coming to you all the time. Now you are a Christian. Money is not coming again. Persecution. What you've got to do is you've got to stand up and bring that word out of your briefcase. And begin to paint images. And when the images are painted, begin to declare the image that you see begin to announce what you see and begin to call what you see and begin to prophesy what you see until what you see overcomes what you see. You didn't hear me? Until what you see overcomes what you see. And the Bible says when this persecution comes for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. You know what they will say? God, I went to church. I even paid tight. I paid tight. Is that how you behave? So that's how you be. No wonder people don't pay tight. 
I pay tight and they stole my car. And God, you are there watching. Were you watching? Are you really alive or you are dead? You were there. They took the car. You were there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> they are offended. <laughs> they are offended. They have taken it personal. And they are angry with God. Jonah said, why shouldn't I be angry? <laughs> he said, I'm angry even to death. <laughs> so you are there. You are there and I'm trekking. You are there. You are there. <laughs> you are offended. You know what I mean offended? Off ended. You are offended because you do not understand that it's not God. It's you and Satan in this matter. And God has confidence that you will win. Don't disappoint God. You pull out that word and tell Satan, sit down and tell God, don't worry yourself. I'm cool here. I have all I need to take care of this bastard. The word that goeth forth shall not come back void, but accomplish. Teaching good tonight. They are offended. Somebody say, I will not be offended. Say it again, I will never be offended. Say it one more time, I will never be offended. I have always told the story of mama, how she went to pay tight in her church. As she finished paying the tight, by the time she got home, I'm robust within that space. They carried everything plus the food on the fire. <laughs> Even the rice she was cooking on the fire so that it will dawn before she come back and eat. They carry both the rice and the stove. <laughs> I'm telling you a true story. They carry the bed, everything in the room was empty. They evacuated the entire house. Within the time she went to pay tight and come back. She is paying tight, they are packing her property. When persecution and affliction arise for the world's sake. Uh, somebody say, ah, pa Papa, why will God allow that? Oh, it's not only you. Hey, man, man, no, man. When Jesus was born as a baby in a manger, Herod went out and killed all the children. Persecution, affliction. The word. The word. God had to say, hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. Take that baby, Egypt, quickly. Run, 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 run. Why will God carry Jesus and run? Why won't God just say, no, Pharaoh, be blind. No, run with the boy, run. There are times in your life when persecution comes, you have to hear God to know what kind of reaction to give it. And that's why you and God must be intact. That's why you've got to be in the world. Be in the world. Mama said when she came back, the house is empty. <laughs> so she took a tight book and said, Father, I just paid my tithe and I cannot lose. You rebuke the devourer, you said, and now I demand for my property brought back now. She began to praise God. I, I can't tithe and I'm devoured. No, 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 I refuse that. 11 days after, she got a message. They said to her that they found some property and they don't know if it is her own because there's a diary. Is there a diary? They're using seeing her name and the house address. They dump everything to the rice. <laughs> and God located people that found everything plus the rice. Not even rice was missing. As cooked as it was for 11 days, it was cooked there waiting for the eater. God is faithful. Everything was returned. No, 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 no. You can't tight and the devil make things tight for you. Except you don't know who you are tight into. Persecution and affliction arise for the world's sake. And immediately they are offended. But she wasn't offended. So with patience, she possessed her soul until she brought in her harvest. Are you with me here? She got everything returned. Nothing was, not even a pen. With extra. Because when people heard that her things were taken, they started bringing gifts. They started helping her to restock the house. So that was extra because the whole house came back. Plus extra. Which if that thing didn't happen, they won't bring <laughs> Good measure, pressed out, shaking together. 2015, recover all. If you stand up and shout that amen like thunder, recover all. Recover all. Recover all. 
Lift your two hands and say with me in the name of Jesus. I see Jesus. I see the image. I see the finished work. And I stand boldly in the finished work with a clear image of my prosperity, health, success, favor, promotion, open doors, the blessing. I see it clearly. And I declare manifestation time is here now. I didn't hear your amen. Lift your two hands, open your mouth and blast in tongues like a madman. I'm not hearing your voices. The righteousness of faith, speak it. The righteousness of faith, speak it. The righteousness of faith, speak it. Open your mouth, pray in the Holy Ghost. Building up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth wide. Open your mouth wide. Open your mouth wide. I give you a mouth and a wisdom that your enemies cannot resist nor gain say. Rago dobo sota, rago dobo sokele ne moha, ele ne mo jande, egre ne mo sante le moha, ere te ke 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 re ne mo shande, brada gam brada koto ne brado te ple te preya, ere kotanga ke ke judi ananga, ele ne bato pe prita ananga, ira da bonde ke le ne mo shata, ela to ke malaya, ela bo je ke re ne mo sa, ega boda boda ega mo shande. Oh, ege borosote, ege borosote, ege borosote, ege borosote. Brandango ngege rene monga ngege, ujabo de boroto pusete le de pute nenge keke na ila mango keke nenge eke le ne mango eke le de bosate te ele boto neke pote le ne moha. Rise up like an edifice, higher and higher. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Rise up higher and higher, like an edifice. Strengthened with might in the inner man, Christ dwells in your heart by faith. You rooted and grounded in love, comprehend with all saints. Comprehend with all saints. Comprehend with all saints. Comprehend with all saints. Be strengthened with might. Hey, hey, hey. Anga mo shentele ne mo sotaya. Brete ke 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 ke. See the image and declare it. See the image. Mara to bereke tu na malana marote ke bata. See the image of the finished work of Christ. Breto tato te bereke tonanga. <laughs> push, 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 push for thirty more seconds. Push it, push it, push it. Build up your holy faith, your most holy faith. Be strengthened with might.
Gebo jagoro no mozida la na menge. Grede gebura na keke kele ne moho. Brede keke keke rede moho dia. Ere ne mo gaga gaga ye ne moho dege. Brede keke go ya na gaga go ge ye ne mo kote ne keke ke. Ege ba 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 ne. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we rejoice. Lift your hands up and rejoice and give him praise. Begin to thank him and begin to bless him. See the image clearer and rejoice. See that image in your spirit and give him praise and rejoice. Rejoice and give him thanks. The Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your two hands up. Father, I decree and I declare that everyone under the sound of my voice tonight in this building and watching by way of television, the image is getting clearer. The image is getting clearer. The image is getting fuller. In the mighty name of Jesus. Nothing will stop the harvest. Nothing will stop manifestation. Nothing will stop manifestation. We call forth everything redemption has provided. I declare health for your bodies. Money for your destinies. Favor for your life. Breakthroughs like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus. Marital favors. Career favor, family favors, destiny favors. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Your body is healed. Your organs are renewed. Throughout this year, you will be strong. You will do exploits. You will build a house. You will lay the foundation. You will build a business. You will flourish in the business. You will build a company. You will flourish in the company. You will build a vision. You will build a dream. You will finish it in the name of Jesus. For these and other messages and books by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email office at powercityinternational.org